financial freedom only comes to those who are actually taking control of their money. I hope this is clear and this is one of the basics. And in this video we'll talk about how to save your money. We'll talk about basic tips that have been working throughout history of humanity. Right, one of the best and the first books which I have read about relationship about money and how to save money is The Richest Man in the Babylon. And the thing which is told there about saving money is that you have to pay yourself first. What does it mean? So let's talk about pay yourself. Pay yourself means that, for example, you're having some amount of money that you receive from your salary, right? Your income. And what you're doing with that money? You're paying to a baker to buy bread. You're buying some mobile phones, laptops, and etc. But the thing is, when you do that, means you give your money to other persons. You're giving your money to a baker, you're giving your money to a shop, to a certain brand that holds that laptops or mobile phones and etc. And you're not holding that money to you. You're giving that money to somebody else. It means you're not paying yourself, you're paying to others, right? And so to save money, you want to pay to yourself. And first means that you should do that first of all. When you receive some income, for example, income after taxes especially, you want to save certain amount of that money immediately before you start spending any money. And paying yourself first, that is meant in this book, The Richest Man in the Babylon, which is one of the best books, link in the description actually, is that you have to take 10% of your income after taxes and save it for yourself. And you should do that before you start spending any out of that money, right? So every dollar that you save is dollar that you earn. And economy and saving money is one of the things which you should take seriously. Because if you save only 10% of your income, and no matter how big or small your income is, and especially if your income is small, you're building a habit, right? Because we are humans, are creatures of habit. And if you're steadily having that habit of saving 10% of your income, especially now when you have low income or average income, later, when you will be a millionaire or billionaire, you will do the same things. You'll take 10% of your income and save it but in a bigger scale. And therefore, it's much better for you so that if you train now, if you do any mistakes now and you build a habit right now, next time when you receive your salary, so that later you will avoid bigger mistakes which will have bigger influence and bigger impact, right? So this is the first thing which you can start doing right now, next time when you receive your salary, is to take the 10% out of that salary and save it. You do not need to do any budgeting for that, you do not do anything else, anything difficult. This is the first and immediate thing which you can do for yourself and start building a habit. And so we talked about that saving money and becoming financially free is about controlling your money, right? And the next step in controlling your money, which you can do for yourself, which will take more effort, of course, but it's worth it, is to start budgeting. It means to start keeping track of your cash flow, of your incomes and outflows, right? And this is something you can do with literally any app. If you go to App Store or Google Store and see any app that fits for you, you can use free or paid app, no matter what, or you can try doing Google Sheets or Excel spreadsheets and customize them for your will, right? Because they're customizable and that's the advantage of Google Sheets. Or you can go and try writing down on a paper because I know that especially elder people, they like to deal with paper. So you can try any of the things which fit for you. And basically what you want to do is you want to describe different categories of your incomes and your outflows of your money. By the way, subscribe to this channel. There are plenty of nice and good videos about investing in personal finance, it will be good for you. So you want to describe different categories of your incomes and outflows when you make your budgeting. 
What may be the categories of your income? It may be your monthly wage that you receive, right? Then it may be your side hustles. By the way, I have video about side hustles. You can check it out. Plenty of side hustles that you can start doing right now. You may start doing any online business and you may receive something from that. You may rent out some property, real estate, and you can receive money from that. Or you can have money as a gift for your birthday present or anything else. Those are the categories of income and you want to separate those incomes, right? And categories of your expenses may be like spending for your living, paying your bills, water bills, phone bills, and etc. This is basically your living, your flat. Then you spend money for food, for transportation, for clothes, and for medicals, right? Those are the main categories that you want to be there in your expense spreadsheet or your expense app or paper, whatever, where you track your money cash flows, right? And so what are the benefits of keeping track of your budget? When you keep track of your budget, you know how much money you spend per month. And this is especially important to build your financial goals. I've talked about financial goals in one of my first videos. You can check it out here. It's actually bad video quality, but it's a good value provided to you. There I have a bigger breakdown of categories, how much you can track your money and how much you can spend them for different categories. You can check it out there. And so this is the first benefit of keeping track of your budget. Second thing is you can start being more precise with how much you want to spend your money, right? And there is a strategy called 50, 30, 20% rule. So what does it say? It says that 50% of your income after taxes, you want to spend for your needs. 30% of your income, you want to spend for your wants. And 20% of your income, you want to spend for savings. You want to save that money. The difference between this one and just for putting away 10% monthly is that first of all, you need to track where you spend your money, your needs, your wants, or to save. And basically the main difference here and difficulty here is that you need to differentiate your needs and your wants. For example, in the same category of foods, there may be your needs and your wants. So your needs is basic nutrients, basic foods that you need for yourself, for your body and water and etc. Your wants is additional delicious foods, extra expensive vegan foods. And I'm not saying that you should not spend for that, but you have only 30% of your income to spend to there, right? Same thing with clothes. You can have basic clothes that you need and you can have some extra fancy clothes that you would like to wear at some party. So these are wants and needs are basic things that you need for yourself. And the second difference from the first thing which I told that you need to come from 10% of savings to 20%. This is twice as much, but as soon as you start building your habit with 10%, then you can steadily and slowly increase that percentage of money that you save. And then you will end up with pretty good amount of money saved. And so one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to subscribe for different newsletters for YouTube channel, subscribe for this YouTube channel, read best books about relationship with money, about investing, about saving money. For example, that book, which I told before, The Richest Man in the Babylon, is a very nice book for beginners to start saving money and about relationship with money. And the other book is Intelligent Investor. That's a book about investing, right? And Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all the nice book to start doing with so reading those free newsletters or subscribing to free YouTube channels or even buying a book will bring you to a different level of understanding about your relationship with money, about different mistakes that people do with money and especially long-term effects of those relationship. It's nothing compared to the benefits it's giving to you. So it's definitely worth it if you start basically investing your time into finding out more things about how to deal with money. And so the next thing you can do to earn even more money is to start investing that money. Because when you set aside, for example, 10% of your money or even 20% of your income, 
and you just put it on the table or on your bank account, then you should understand that it is losing its value over time because of inflation. And to protect that money from inflation, you can start investing. It will protect it from inflation, it will save that amount of money that you put aside every month and even get reasonable returns to you. But you should understand that there are big differences between investing and speculating. Investing is when you save your money and get reasonable returns and speculating is when you want to buy something today and sell it next week and then benefit from that. That is not something you want to do. And actually, I have a video about investing for beginners, super beginner friendly video and you better check it out because it's free and I think it's helpful to most of the beginners. So investing is one of those things which you want to do to your money after you set it aside, you want to invest that money to save it, right? And the final thing which I'm going to tell you today how to earn more money is to increase your income. Because without this, this video would not be full, right? Increasing your income and certainly the percentage of that increased income, for example, 10% will bring you more money that you save. And what means by increasing your income? If you love your job, if you develop your proficiency, if you take any other side hustles, if you improve yourself, then you can earn more money. And if you earn more money and you take percentage of that money to save, then your saving money will become more, will grow more. That is something certainly you want to do for yourself is to earn more money. So basically what you want to do is you want to increase your income and decrease your outflow of your money and you want to take control over that money. Because as I told in the beginning, financial freedom comes only to those who are actively taking control of their financial future. I hope this video was useful to you. Please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.